Hello, and welcome to the Evelyn Y. Davis Studios at the National Press Foundation. We're here today with Dash Davidson of Tableau Software, who's going to continue telling us about how to use Tableau to create good interactive journalism. Dash, welcome again. Thank you, Chris. So we've been talking in a few other segments about how to use Tableau software for building maps, for building charts, and other interactives. Now you're going to tell us about how to do something called story points, which is uh, a term in Tableau to help create an interactive data, uh, interactive data visualization on your on a website. Yeah. So, so the reason we actually created this feature was specifically with journalists in mind. So. We developed this to create a way to make a narrative data story. So a way to link multiple dashboards together in a narrative flow. So this was designed specifically for journalists. OK. And so some of the examples that have been done that you worked with and that mm -hmm. others have worked on, uh, we have an example from CNBC, the business uh, uh, network and website, talking about the history of the Dow and showing it over the decades, and you are able to drill into particular time periods, into the particular decades, and show how the Dow was changing during those time periods. We have an example from a newspaper in Australia um, dealing with the refugee crisis, and they were showing the share of refugees in Australia. Um, it, it, can you explain for me why this was a newsworthy item? Yeah, so this was back in 2013. There was a large public outcry in Australia about undue refugee burden that the public felt that Australia had was shouldering. So what this journalist, Inga Ting, at the Sydney Morning Herald was able to do was actually to look at the, the data, the facts, the numbers, and look at Australia's ranking globally in terms of its refugee burden on several different metrics. So as we can see, Australia is that little orange dot. In fact, Australia was not high up on the global rankings in terms of how many refugees they were housing. OK. And we have another example from a scientific website about how the sun controls the weather. Give me a little bit of a, a, of a overview of what this example was. Yeah, so this one's a bit technically over my head, but it's talking about and through this series of very dramatic and, and in-depth story points how different phases of the sun and, and sunspots and things like that actually control the weather and the wind and the temperature. So I was very impressed with how such a complicated concept could be distilled so simply in these, in these story points. Okay. And then finally, we're going to lead you, you're going to lead us through an example of a, a fairly kind of graspable uh, data exercise, grocery prices in eight countries around the world. Um, and uh, this was data that was crowdsourced, but it came, it was crowdsourced by the World Bank, and then you used that data to help create this interactive, and you're going to show us how you did that. Exactly, yeah. So if, if we look on my computer here, we see that uh, here's actually the data set. So it's a very simple data set. So the World Bank went into eight different countries in different cities around the globe and asked people how much the price of different goods are. So we have white rice, chicken legs, shrimp, also have weird things like Kellogg's Corn Flakes and, and bread and, and whatnot. So let's connect to Tableau and see what type of data story we can come up with here. Because the, the whole point of Tableau is the data existing in this Excel format, no one really can pick any stories out of here. You know, there's not much value in here. However, let's see what we can do with it in Tableau. So I just got to do a little prep work here. I'm going to split my location column and call this one city. So I'm actually editing my metadata directly here in Tableau, which is pretty cool. You, you use the phrase metadata. What do you mean by that? So I'm not actually editing the Excel file that I'm connected to. You know, nothing's changing the Excel file. However, I'm editing how Tableau is interpreting that file. Okay. So I'm editing things on the Tableau level, not on the database level. All right. And now let's go in here. And whenever I come to a new data set, I like to think of how my you know, reader is going to think of it. So the first question I might have that any reader will have is, where is this data coming from? So what countries did the World Bank go into and, and ask where, where their data was? So here are the countries. Uh, you know, we see we have eight countries around the world. Now maybe I have a question. What was the average price of these cereals or these groceries in each country? And now we see we have a shaded map based on this legend 
So the darker the green, the higher the average price. So if you hover over Nigeria, the average price is 334. Kenya, a little cheaper. So it looks like India and Pakistan had cheaper food prices, whereas the African countries had higher ones. Very interesting. So what I'm actually going to do here, though, is just change this chart a little bit. So let's take country and put it onto color instead and make this a filled map. So now when my reader asks that question of where is this data coming from, we got to think, Chris, in terms of the story we're trying to create. Question one is where is the data coming from? So let's call this sheet our countries tab and let's move forward with our analysis. So now I'm going to look at my products separated and look at which of the actual products were the most expensive. So if I sort this column, we can see that shrimp across their entire data set, so across the entire world, is the most expensive, followed by beef, then instant coffee and, and Kellogg's Corn Flakes, more expensive than tuna and chicken legs. You would not maybe think that. So let's drill down a little bit, and instead of looking at this on a global level, look at it on a country by country level. So I'm going to take country, just drop it out to columns, another copy onto color to be consistent, and now we see our prices on our different countries. So we can see maybe that shrimp is way more expensive in Bangladesh than in Indonesia. Um, which country likes cornflakes the most? Let's sort. So cornflakes are most expensive in Nigeria. Again, cheapest in India. What about tuna steak? So there's all sorts of different questions we can ask at this point in the analysis and different, different answers we can get. And we can actually go in and add some analytics here. So we can take an average line and, and see our average by region or by country. So we can see that you know, there are different averages, in, you know, uh, that makes sense, in our different countries. So the average food price in Nigeria is just over $3, and India is about half of that. And if we want to just select specific foodstuffs, so chicken legs, then we can see very clearly Nigeria has the most expensive average price. So this I'm going to call price variation. And now let's go in and start to actually create this story. Let's start to lead and, and create this narrative. So my first question is, and I'm going to make a caption, data was, was collected from eight countries around the globe. OK, question one. Question two, let's look at the actual prices here. So prices for different foodstuffs varied across our countries. And now maybe I want to lead my reader and tell them to just look at specific items. So I'm going to duplicate this point and say, all right, look at flour in Brazil, look at tuna steaks in Indonesia. I'm looking for outliers here, Chris. So I'm going to mm -hmm. just direct them to pay attention to these specific items and say, what's going on here? So specific items stood out from the average total price. So I'm creating a narrative. I'm creating a point um, that I'm going to you know, soon elucidate when I actually write this article. But now I'm on my data collection point. And you can see that the actual average price on the bottom there is dynamic and updates for us. Oh, and we, need, we forgot Kenya, so let's get instant coffee for Kenya and update that. It's that easy. And now I want to just make one more quick point, quick sheet, and then we'll be done with our story. So I'm going to take observation date. So we'll look at a little trend over time. So see when this data was collected. It looks like it was a three-month period from January to April of 2012. And then let's look at price over time. Again, make sure this is an average. And break it down by country. So now here are different countries, and there are different trends over time. And I think it would be cool as well if we could just look at specific food items one at a time. So this is just my trend for apples across the different countries. There's bananas. Here's cassava. Here's milk. So milk looks like it saw a dramatic drop in the Philippines. So I'm going to call this my trend over time. And so now I'm going to add that to my story. And I'm going to just change this quickly to a drop-down menu to save a little space. And now here I have a food prices varied 
over time. And now if we go back and look at what we've created, you know, in just about five minutes, so we've taken a reader from, all right, where was data collected, how the price is varied across different foodstuffs in the different countries. We told them to pay attention to specific outliers. And now we let them explore over time. So we've really managed to create a real narrative data story here. And now if I add a title, so crowd sourced grocery prices over time, we've really created something that the World Bank could potentially show off and say, look at this data we collected. We're not just going to give you an Excel file. We're going to actually give you an interactive data story that you can actually gain value from. And again, now we just save it up to the web, just like this. And next thing you know, we can embed it directly on the World Bank website. And so you, this is right now being operated on your laptop. But yes. when, that's, when that's uploaded, when that's embedded, the reader will be able to go in and go to the, the food, food prices changes over time. And they'll be able to call up milk, then they'll be able to call up bananas, then they'll be able to call up. I mean, so it's, it's you're creating like a four or five story point template, but then with, within each one of those, the they can reader actually interact. can interact. Exactly. So if you if we look back at my screen right here, so this is this is the visualization actually saved on the web. So as you can see, it's the exact same, you know, format and design and functionality that we created on the desktop application, you know, with the same ability to go and select, oh, I want to just look at this and have the average line update, or the food prices over time. Here's just chicken legs, and you can see it update. And then the final piece is now I can go here and grab my actual JavaScript embed code, simply just copy that, paste it on, uh, you know, a blog post or anything, and next thing you know, I have this live in my article. Okay, and the, the data here and the, the visualization, this is residing on Tableau servers? Yes, Tableau servers. Okay. And are there limitations for how much, I mean, how big can the, uh, the data sheets be? As, are, there, are there limitations for so a, a Tableau, file to, to be? Yeah, Tableau Public can handle 10 million rows of data. Okay. Yeah. So that's going to be, that's going to cover most stories that uh, we do. Hopefully. hopefully. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, I, 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 Appreciate this example very much. Um, so we've been with uh, Dash Davidson of Tableau Software, who has been talking about data visualization um, storyboard, story points, and we also have segments dealing with how to map and how to create charts. So Dash, thank you very much. Thank you, Chris, and my contact info will be posted on the screen if anyone needs to get in touch. All right, thank, thank you, you much.